Language arts. Ooh, I can feel that fresh air. Uh, Toby and Emma, if you get cold, please shut that door. I don't want to freeze you out, okay? Um, who can tell me what the proper noun is in this sentence? The proper noun. James. No, proper noun. Tessa. Yeah, remember a proper noun is a name, particular name or place. So weaver is a proper noun because it is a name. Who remembers who weaver was in the story? Machine. Yes. A spider. All right. Who can tell me a verb? Grayson. Owen. To what? Thread, no. Remember, verb is an action. Boy. Gabe. <laughs> We're going to go through the whole. Jeremiah. That is not. So that is a preposition. Emmy. Yes! Weaver began to wind. This is the action. Began. Tricky. Sometimes the verbs are not like running, jumping, hopping, eating. Eating. <laughs> um, so, what about the preposition? We already said it. Who remembers what it is? Christian. Yes. Remember, a preposition is a location. And put prep. So, you know what, this is, uh, this is always tricky. So, to wind is an infinite verb. So, it is, I just really don't feel like it's a safe thing to study that, but maybe we'll have to if it keeps coming up. So just write that. So to wind is a verb, infinite verb, infinitive, I mean. All right, what is silk? Actually, you know what we should do before we do anything? I always like to find the what first. Yes. So what are the nouns? There are two. Olivia. Luke. Yeah. That is one. What is the other? Cool. Yes. So now that we have found the nouns, what are the adjectives describing the what? What do adjectives describe? Just say it. Very good. So we have noun. Are there any descriptives? Quinchin. No. Yes. Is there another adjective? Jonathan. Some? Yeah. Some branches. Okay. 
It's a very short sentence. That was a very short. So I think we got it all. So we talked about this vaguely yesterday. What kind of a sentence is this? Simple, complex, or compound? McKenna. Simple. It is. It is a very simple sentence. Who can tell me what the simple subject is? M. Yes. And then who can tell me? Oh, I need to write subject. The simple predicate. Remember, the simple subject is the noun. What is the verb of the sentence, which is also the simple predicate? So with that said, I pretty much gave it away. What is the simple predicate, Owen? The, the and? Yes. Very good. So, that was probably the fastest we've ever gotten that done. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very short sentence. Yes? Besides Sarah's hands were cold and clammy. Yes, that one was extremely, that was our very first one, wasn't it? I still have my <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, that was our, oh, wow, that seems forever ago. We were Zooming. We were Zooming. Isn't that crazy? Does that not seem forever ago? All right, this is what we're going to do. Did I tell you all to just start talking? No. Trying to, since we have so much time, I'm very, oh, this would be a great time to come in. Oh, okay. Their timing is perfect because we were just going to start something new and we have time. So, because we got finished quickly. All right, hey, third graders. Um, as maybe some of you know, um, the rules for what your mask can be changed just a little bit starting tomorrow for some of you, okay? Your parents got an email about it, but I wanted to come down and talk to you. Dr. Moore said I needed to do that, so. <laughs> yes, you're also um, on Zooming. You're also virtual. Am I virtual? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, so here are the new rules. The mask has to cover your nose and your mouth when you're wearing it. There is no more of this, mm -hmm. letting it slide down and sit under your nose. If the mask you have won't stay up on your nose, you need to get a different one. Or you need to let me know because I have these metal bands that can be stickered onto your mask. You could use tape, I mean like medical tape to keep it up on your nose. There's different options, but this is not an option. If Mrs. Reed has to tell you you know, to keep coiling up your mask, um, that's gonna be something that we will, she's just gonna let me know, or Dr. Moore, and we will um, get you a different mask to wear for the rest of the day, kind of like if you had a dress code violation, how you had to put on something different. Mm -hmm. We'll get you a different mask, and then Dr. Moore will let your parents know that you need something different for your mask, okay? Here's the second thing. It needs to fit snugly against your cheeks, okay? It can't have these big gaps where all your air is just coming out the sides, okay? You understand what that means? So you see how my mask goes snug under my chin and stays where it's supposed to stay. I don't see any super loose ones in here, but... Um, okay, that's the next one. It needs to be at least two layers. So I'm gonna take my mask off for just a second. I'll step back. So you ought to be able to do this with your mask when you take it off in general, okay? Some of them are a little bit different, but you should feel more than one layer of fabric. And that fabric, if you hold it up to a light and look at it, you shouldn't be able to see through your mask. You guys try it super quick, okay? Yeah. Don't talk, because you've got your mask on. 
So you hold it up to the light and see through it. You can see maybe light, but you shouldn't be able to see the ceiling. Does that make sense? Okay, Max, back on. All right. The other thing, and this is, I see some of you are wearing gaiters. That's okay for today. Gaiters are okay, but they have to have two layers, like your mask. So if your gaiter is only a single layer, you have a couple of options. You can not, wait, wait three. Not wear a gaiter anymore, okay? Just get a regular mask. You can get a gaiter that has two layers, if it exists, okay? Or you can wear two at once so that you have that double layer. And I see that, what's your name, but I forgot. Sam. Sam. Sam's like doubled his over. I think I'd have to ask about that if that's okay, because you've got this openness at the bottom there, but it might work. I don't know. I have to I see how know. that I've, would work. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, Just but, because I think it's pretty loose down here, but I don't know yeah. what is it can, even if it's tight here, it can be a little bit loose at the bottom. That's the question. Two layers, so, okay. All right. Um, any other quick questions about what you have to have or not have? Uh, Luke. Um, when I do this, I kind of feel like the... Can you feel your breath coming out there? So, Luke, that's a really good point. If you can feel your breath coming out, where is your breath going? Oh, right? <laughs> and that's what we don't, don't want, want to have happen. So, good point. Um, so, if yeah, I have a lot of my boys who have the gators, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I guess what we need to know is can they double up and if they can feel the breath coming out then they're what they need I to think see if you can feel the breath coming out but you could also take two gators right and put them up and then that solves that problem okay that might get a little warm yeah. I don't know you might decide you'd like to wear a mask a regular mask better and I haven't honestly gone on Amazon or anywhere and looked to see if you can get a double layer gator I, I have no idea but I could look I know if you wear glasses and the fogging bugs you, totally get that. The mask that like, um, I'm trying to see if somebody has one in here. That light in the back is through. Right? Yeah. Like you take it. Yeah, that's um, right. Like some of the masks, like that one there, they've got, or like uh, that one there. When Sheen? When Sheen have a, they're, paper, they're kind of a paper surgical mask, and so it's got the metal in here, but it really sits flat against your face, flatter even than like mine does. And that helps you, your glasses, that can kind of go up under the glasses a little bit, and so you put them, your glasses here on your nose, and then it doesn't fog up so much. But I do understand. I know that's a pain, okay? Um, we'll keep experimenting, all right? Here's the deal, though. I don't want Mrs. Reed to have to keep telling some of you two, three, seven, 22 times a day to pull your mask up. Are we not all just rather done with that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna just know that a, new, a different one will be given to you and you've got to have a mask that works right, okay? Does anybody have any questions? What needs to be covered? Emma? Your nose and your mouth. Your nose and your mouth. Loosely or snugly? Uh, Emma? Snugly. Now, not like cutting off your circulation, okay? <laughs> but you shouldn't have like big flaps on the side either, okay? Um, great. Any other questions for me, gang? Okay, cool. I'm going to be coming um, to around maybe tomorrow, Thursday, I don't know, whatever day I feel like it or Dr. Moore tells me to come around. And just kind of, I'll pop in and just kind of see like, hey, do I see a bunch, you know, if I see you in the hallway and I notice that every single time I see Tessa, I have to tell her to pull her mask up. I mean, <laughs> not take you Tessa, because I don't think I've ever had to tell you to pull your mask up. So, um, like, then I might make a note to talk to Tessa or have send an email to mom and dad and just say, hey, Tessa's having trouble with her mask not staying up. You need to come up with something else, okay? Or Dr. Moore will do that, all right? One or two of Make sense? You can also get these things, guys, if your mask is a little bit loose, like it's kind of flapping on your face a little bit, like too gappy. You can get them with these little, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call them. Adjusters. Adjusters. 
And then, so like, yeah, Olivia, yours is a little bit loose. You might want to snug it up a little bit if you can with those adjusters. So you don't want them so tight that they hurt your ears, but tight enough that it's not flopping around in the breezes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bud. Uh, okay. Is it Helen? Mm -hmm. oh. Nice. I have the same. Perfect. I have them on all of my masks Me too. too. Mm -hmm. They're invaluable. It really helps. You can just, you can buy those on Amazon. They're very cheap. Um, so As are the adjusters on the nose. You can if buy you the those, nose. Those are metal, amazing pieces too. of metal for the mm -hmm. nose to help it stay up on your nose. Like so, like Emma, does yours have a metal piece in the nose? Right. But maybe that's Emma's favorite mask, and it's perfect and comfortable in every single way, except sometimes when she talks, it starts to slip down over her nose. So she can get one of those little metal pieces, and it's like a sticker. You just peel it a stick, yeah. and then you can pinch it just a little bit to help keep it snug on your nose, okay? Because, I, I mean, it's annoying when they're kind of falling down all the time. Emma? My grandma makes my mask, and she, uh, and I up without it. You don't have to have that. That's not a requirement. It's just a help. Way in the back behind Luke. Um, I have a mask Thank that you. falls down sometimes when I talk. And what I did is um, I just flipped it over. And then it wouldn't fall down. Oh. Okay. If that works and your mouth and your nose are covered and it's snug, sounds good to me. All right. I want to get let Mrs. Reed get back to learning. <laughs> Thank but you. But if you have any questions, so um, the gator situation, is that going to get some clarification? Um, I mean, the clarification is it's got to be two layers. Okay, I'll see so if I can get something on the, if it doubles over. I think it's... So Sam, double yours up again and see what Mrs. Jordan thinks. Couldn't you double it up and then put another gator on? Well, well you, you can, can just wear two, two gators. You don't have to double it. Why? Can That's triple. Gators. Can you feel, how much breath can you feel coming out underneath there, bud? I mean, that's snug against his face. I could live with that. I think I could live okay. with that. I don't feel that much. I think that I could, for the gator wearers in the crowd, if it's down below your chin and tight to your cheeks. Yeah, because I mean, mine, it's not like tight against no, my chin I mean, either. So, so I can live with That's similar to what a mask is. I feel like, what, do you have some? We can talk I think it's those. fine. I mean, if that, if. I Raising just want to make sure come tomorrow I know what to do with the gators. Um, it doesn't really work for me. Okay. Um, we'll keep trying stuff, okay? Or you can put two gators on and then they just are up, you know. That's good. So, Grayson, you can't double that up because you got a lot of material right down here. You can't just do what Sam and Owen is doing and double it. Yeah, like that. Is it too loose at the back to stay up on? So you could you could live with that if that's not in the pushing. I mean, I know with the glasses it's hard, but yeah, we'll keep trying some things, okay? Yeah, I think I, that's snug enough. That's that'll work, okay? So All right, then I'm, I'm the fine. The big deal that. is third graders. I don't want to see that mask below your nose. Please keep it up on your nose, okay? And if you need help, let Mrs. Reed know, and she can let me know, and I will. Um, I'll figure it out. Luke, I'm not sure if yours is long enough to do the double over. Oh, it's the same thing as ours. Is it? Okay. I can live with that. I okay. Think. But that looks tight enough. That, you know, it's really not that different than this is open down here. Right. So right. as long as their their nose and their mouth is covered. We just don't want a bunch of gap here by the right. cheeks that's letting the air just exactly. free flow up. Okay? All right. Great. All right, so Good come. Good job, guys. From here on out, gator wearers, you have to double up, okay? How many desks do you have in here, Mrs. Reed? How many desks do I have in here? I have 20, 26, 20, 23. 23, okay, thanks. Oh, thank, now you're making a second guess, one, two. Because I added two. That's what I was. Oh, okay. So you have 25, we have 25 in here. Okay. Okay. Great. Guess, but I only have. Okay. Let me know if there's anything else yeah. I can do for you. Thank okay. you so much. All right. So, Grayson, does that fog your glasses up a lot? No. No? It okay. Helps. Oh, it does. Oh, good. Maybe not as much air is going. So, gator wearers, from here on out, double up. Okay? okay. 
And uh, yes, Paul. Could I write the type of mask? Oh yeah, yeah. The um, the main thing is there are a few students who um, the masks are always slipping down, and I know oh, you know who you are. Those have got to stay above your nose. Your mask has always, always has to cover your nose and your mouth. There's no choice. That's extremely important. Yes, Toby. Can you what? Yes, please do. If you are freezing, please close the door. Any other questions about the masks? Everybody's good. My, my gator wares are good. Okay. So I would suggest the what um, all of you wearing gaiters right now to double it up now so you get used to it. I guess I did. You did. And I flipped Yep. So double up however you want to do that. Mm -hmm. So what you could probably start doing is wearing them inside out and then you can have your design on the front if you want. Okay, that's, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, like Sam did. All right. Very good. That was good information. So, we have a little time. I'm going to read a little bit of this. Move this out of the way. I feel like this thing is really close. All right, we got sidetracked yesterday with all of our fun comics, <laughs> which was super fun. And I must add that Cole made a very fun comic. Yeah. Um, he does have it in plastic. You know what? What I'll do is, Cole, can I walk around with it? Sure. So I am going to walk around with Cole's comic because it's really good. I love. Well, Cole, why don't you read it? You read it, and then I will pass it around. Or you know what? You can pass. I don't have to, you can do that. So why don't you come up here, read your fun comic, and then you can walk around so people can see it. It's very cute. Well, do you want me to read it? Yes. Okay. You can come up with me because you're, uh, you're the author. I will read it. Cool the illustrator. The Adventures of Steve. Oh, that's a good title. An unofficial Minecraft comic book. So I'm going to look at it, and you're not going to see it, but you can read, and then Cole's going to walk around with it. So Steve is sleeping. He has a little zzzz. Steve! Steve! Uh, what? It's morning! I'm assuming it's his mother. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll get dressed. Ready. He turns into a different, is that like a, that looks like a Minecraft. Yeah. He turns into, a, oh, he already is. Okay. Oh, yeah. Awesome. What, who, explain, what is this? That's a creeper. Okay. Um, oh. So it just, um, if you get close, it will start to signal and it will explode. Yeah. Oh, oh, see, I don't know my Minecraft creatures. He's a giant. He's a giant. So he goes, oh, and then, ah, boom, he blew, did he blow up? Mm -hmm. Steve blew up or the other guy uh, blew up? Yeah, um, the creeper blew up. Oh dear, is that an army of creepers? Bang, boom, pow! Did he continue? Ooh. Very cute, I love it. See, I am at a disadvantage because I have never in my life I seen Minecraft. I can make a comic. So now you can go over here, walk around with your awesome comic, so everyone can see. Go slow so everyone can see the comics, pictures. You did a fantastic job. So it's been read, so we're not gonna read it all, boy. So he, we read it, so now you're just looking at the fun pictures that he did. So I think that when we're done with our Martin Luther King Jr. papers, our next assignment in writing should be create your own yes. Yes. comics. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So um, let me think on that as to how long it should be, but I think that'd be fun. So what you should start doing is trying to get ideas. Oh, I already have an idea. It goes with my
So what I would highly recommend to all of you who wear masks, these kind of masks, is go to Athleta, which is a store in the mall that has these, ma these masks that you can breathe through beautifully. They have the adjustable straps. They have the adjustable nose. They're double, and you can, you can breathe through them. I, I now you get five for $20. What? Mm -hmm. So they're not like really cheap, but you can wash them. I've had the same one since September. What? Wait, so just, no, you well, these, this, yeah. The purple one. Oh, I had, yes, I got some new ones on this weekend. But <laughs> from Atlita. <laughs> so if you're looking for mat, a mask that you can breed well in, those are highly recommended. Yes. I was hoping that we wouldn't be wearing them anymore, but it, uh, it's not looking good as far as being able to ditch them. I don't like I like it. All right, thank you, Cole. That is fabulous. Yes, Luke, Jonathan. Oh, you don't. As long as they stay up, I never have a problem with you with yours coming down. So. The adjustable, the things that the adjust are if you can't keep them up on your nose. So if they're always sliding down, then maybe you can get the adjustable to keep your mask. If you're not constantly pulling them up, then you're fine. Yes. This is really nice. This is really what? This is really nice. Yeah, I don't need you passing out either. So, all right. So friends, we had fun yesterday making a little, what would the squirrel have said? So chapter 13, the typewriter. Oh, look at him, he is typing. So I think maybe he does have some kind of superpowers. I have never seen a squirrel type. Before. So this is interesting. Um, so you put this in the end of the day to work on homework. All right, the typewriter. He woke in darkness. His heart was beating very fast. Something had happened. What was it? He was too hungry to think. He sat up and looked around the room. He was in bed and Flora's feet were in his face. She was snoring. He could see the outline of her round head. He loved that head. But man, he was hungry. Sounds like um. <laughs> the door to the bedroom was open. Uh, whose typewriter is this? Uh, Mom? Yes, I think so. Ulysses got off the pillow, went out of the room. He crept along the dark hallway. He went down the stairs and passed the little shepherdess. What is the shepherdess? Who remembers what the shepherdess is? Grayson. Um, it's that lamp that um, has a little picture of. Yes. It's like, it's like both pieces, only one. Shepherd. Yes, the creepy lamp. You can just call it the creepy, creepy lamp. The house was dark, but there was a light on in the kitchen. <gasps> the kitchen. He put his nose up, he sniffed. He smelled something cheesy, wonderful. He ran to the living room and, and the dining room and into the kitchen. He climbed up on the counter and there it was. A lone cheese puff perched on the edge of the red Formica countertop. He ate it. It was delicious. Maybe there were more cheese puffs. He opened a cabinet and yes, there was a big bag. Oh, I missed it. Bag of beautiful word cheese omania written in golden script on the front of it. He ate until the bag was empty, and then he burped softly. 
gratefully and looked around the kitchen. What is going to happen? In the darkness, darkened kitchen, the unassuming squirrel worked slowly. His whiskers trembled. His heart sang. Was he fighting evil? Who could say? <gasps> Look at, he's typing. He's very, very excited about his typing. Chapter 14, Squirtle. Flora Bell Buckman, get down here right now. Don't call me Flora Bell, Flora muttered. She opened her eyes. So, so what do you think her mom's upset about? <laughs> Jonathan. Yeah, well, maybe that, but what did the squirrel do? What was the squirrel on that might upset her mother? <laughs> Grayson. No, she, he did eat the cheese puffs, but then what did he go on bef after that, after he ate the cheese puffs? James. Yes, so if you all have eaten cheese puffs before, what stays on your fingers after you eat cheese puffs? <laughs> so let's find out. That's my, that's my one hint. That's what I'm thinking. The room was bright with sunlight. She had been dreaming something wonderful. What was it? She had been dreaming about a squirrel. In her dream, he was flying with his legs straight out in front of him and his tail straight out behind him. He was a squirrel on his way to save someone. He looked supremely, magnificently heroic. Flora sat up and looked down at her feet. There was Ulysses on, sleeping on the pillow. And he did not, and he did look heroic. In fact, <laughs> he was glowing, just like incandesto, except oranger. He was extremely orange. Oh, dear. <laughs> she leaned over Ulysses, Ulysses and reached out a finger to touch his ear. She held the finger up to the light. Cheese. He was covered in cheese dust. Uh-oh, said Flora. Flora, her mother shouted. I'm not kidding. Get down here right now. <clears throat> Flora went down the stairs and passed Marianne, whose cheeks were glowing a healthy and disgusting pink. Who's Marianne? Uh -oh. M. Um, the, lamp. the lamp. You silly lamp, said Flora. Now, shouted Flora's mom. Flora broke into a trot. She found her mother standing in the kitchen in her bathrobe, staring at the typewriter. Yeah. What's this, her mother said, pointing at the typewriter. That's your typewriter, said Flora. She knew that her mother was absent-minded and preoccupied, but this was ridiculous. How could she not recognize her own typewriter? <laughs> I know it's my typewriter, said her mother. I'm talking about the piece of paper in it. I am talking about the words on the paper. Flora leaned forward. She squinted. She tried to make sense of the word typed on the top of the page. Squirtle? Squirtle, said Flora out loud. She felt a surge of delight at the zippy idiocy of the word. It was almost as good Good a word as tootie. Keep reading, said her mother. Squirtle, said Flora again. I am Ulysses, born anew. Do you think that's funny, said her mother. Not really, said Flora. Her heart was beating very fast in her chest. She felt dizzy. I have told you to leave this typewriter alone, said her mother. I didn't, said Flora. What goes on here is a, is a serious business, said her mother. I am a professional writer. I am under deadline for this novel. This is no time for high jinks, which means joking around. Plus, you ate a whole bag of cheese puffs. I did not, said Flora. Her mother pointed at an empty cheesomania bag on the counter. And then she pointed at the typewriter. Flora's mother liked to point at things. 
you left cheese dust all over the typewriter. That is disrespectful. And you simply cannot eat a whole bag of cheese puffs. It's not healthy. You'll become stout. I didn't, said Flora. But then another wave of dizziness came over her. The squirrel could type? Wholly unanticipated occurrences. I'm sorry, said Flora in a small voice. Well, said her mother. She raised her finger. She was obviously getting ready to point at something again. Fortunately, the doorbell rang. <gasps> what is going to happen? This is starting to get interesting. So now we know that Squirrel can type. He knows how to type. And he likes cheese puffs. So 